Hey everyone, my name is Daniel. Welcome to our YouTube channel, and we are back at you guys with another video. Alright, so let's get started. Today, we will show you our attempt to construct four different kinds of all-permanent magnet motors. Here, we have three motors to show you that work on a different principle. And here, we have a fourth motor that works on another principle. Alright, so let's get started. We made a nice drawing for you guys so you can understand the principle of operation. The rotor has 24 magnets that are on an angle. There's three sets of stator magnets. Six magnets each. They are also on an angle. The three sets of stator magnets are actually the timing of the motor. They are not 120 degrees apart, but slightly off. We made a prototype made out of plastic to help you understand better. These are not magnets. This is the rotor. It has 18 magnets. There's three sets of stator magnets, red, green, and yellow. When the blue rotor magnets line up with the yellow stator magnets on opposite corners, the yellow stator magnets are hesitating. The blue rotor magnets are deciding whether to go forward or backwards. At this point, Yellow stator magnets are acting as an obstacle. They're pushing the rotor with blue magnets backwards, while the red and green stator magnets are pushing the rotor with the blue magnets forward. The idea here is that the combined forces of red and green stator magnets together are greater to overcome the opposing forces of the yellow stator magnets. It's like walking two steps forward and one step backward. As the rotor with blue magnets moves one fourth of an inch forward, and as you can see, the outside right corners of the blue magnets line up with the red markings here. The yellow stator magnets begin to provide positive force, pushing the rotor forward. Also, the green stator magnets provide positive force. Now, the red magnets provide negative force instead. Every time one of the blue rotor magnet lines up from one to the next of one of the stator magnets, this process is repeated over and over again. Each of the stator magnets, red, green, and yellow, become positive force two-thirds of the time and negative force one-third of the time. This is our first prototype. We will talk about magnetic shielding towards the end of the video. If you attempt to build one of these without magnetic shielding, use permanent magnets half an inch wide by one inch long. The face of this permanent magnet is small and the magnetic field is more focused. You will have less negative interference and more positive interference. This motor is 11 inches wide. The rotor is 7 inches wide and it has 18 magnets. The stator has 4 timing zones with 3 magnets each. The rotor magnets are 20 degrees apart. After a lot of testing, we discovered that this motor had a lot of negative interaction because of the small size of the rotor and having 30 magnets all in very close proximity and no shielding. We moved on to the next prototype. This prototype is 15 inches wide. The rotor is 10 inches wide. The rotor has 30 magnets. The stator has four timing zones with five magnets each. 
you can see the interaction between the rotor and stator magnets. This motor performs really good. Magnetism is invisible. This is how we perform the testing. We will spin the rotor 10 times at the same speed. Then we will take the average time it takes the rotor to stop while the stator magnets have been removed. Then, gradually, we add a few permanent magnets at a time to the stator timing zones. And then we repeat the process again and see whether it takes less time or more time for the motor to stop. This tells us whether we are getting positive or negative interference. This motor takes a minute and a half to come to a stop with the stator magnets being taken out. And then about three and a half minutes for the rotor to come to a stop with the stator magnets being installed. This is the prototype number three. This prototype performed the best. This motor is 18 inches wide. The rotor is 12 inches wide and it has 36 magnets. As you can see, on this motor we have five timing zones. With five permanent magnets each. The timing is explained best on this prototype. The rotor has 36 magnets that are 10 degrees apart. We have five timing zones that are two degrees offset to each other for a total of 10 degrees. Having a larger rotor in this motor has more positive interference and having an additional fifth timing zone also has more positive interaction. This motor runs for 90 seconds with the stator magnets being taken out and about 5 minutes with the stator magnets being installed. This is our number 4 prototype. If you look closely here, there are stator magnets that are slightly offset to the center of the rotor. Here, the magnets are closer to the center. Progressively, they are going further away from the center. Right now, the permanent magnets are in repulsive mode. They are trying to get further from each other. The rotor will rotate counterclockwise. This shows that the rotor experiences positive interaction, 300 degrees of the rotation. Right now, both sets of magnets in the rotor and the stator are in opposing mode. They repel each other, starting at the small spacing, moving toward the larger spacing. We flip the rotor magnets around. Now, all of the magnets are in attraction mode. They are attracting each other, from the further spacing all the way to the smaller spacing. The rotor will rotate clockwise. Again, the rotor experiences positive interaction 300 degrees of the rotation. We added more permanent magnets to the rotor, 
Shielding will be required for the first three magnets here. We will talk a little bit about magnetic shielding. Here we have little permanent magnets that have a shielding on the back end of it. The front of the magnet is the north and the back end of the magnet is the south. The south polarity has very little interaction. But the north polarity has 10 times more interaction. They are very hard to separate. The magnetic field is looking for the path of least resistance. Copper also can be used as a magnetic shield. The magnetic field can go through the copper, but most of it will travel between the copper shielding and the permanent magnet. When we attempt another prototype of an all-permanent magnet motor, we will use this kind of shielding. On this permanent magnet motor, most of the negative interference is on the first and last magnet of each of the three stator zones. Once the magnet enters the stator field, the ride is smooth until the very last magnet. The stator zones is where most of the negative interference happens. We will use the magnetic shielding there first. Thanks for watching everyone and make sure to subscribe because we have some really cool videos coming your way. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to hit that like button. And also, make sure to check out our online store at www.mindoftesla.com or the link in the description.